I wanted to talk to you about one-tailed versus two-tailed tests. So here we're looking at a two-tailed test. You can see that we have the z-scores of 1.96 and negative 1.96. Those are the z-scores associated with the 2.5% area in the tails. You can see that it's two-tailed because there's two shaded in red zones. I want to remind you that our alpha always remains at 5%. Alpha is the area of our rejection region. In this case, it's shaded red. So we always keep alpha at 5%. Um, and in this case, we've split it evenly 2.5% on either side. So this represents a two-tailed test. The way we would define this rejection region would say scores that are 1.96 and higher, or scores that are negative 1.96 and lower. I just defined that red region. So how do we know if we're doing a two-tailed test? Most tests are going to be two-tailed, because remember, to do a one-tailed test, you need some really good justification. But we can also tell whether it's two-tailed um, from the research question. So the research question is going to have key words in it. Things like, is there a difference between the two groups? Does this drug change your performance? Does this intervention affect your score? Um, is this treatment going to impact how you feel? So notice these are all words that imply there's something's going to happen, but we don't really necessarily know what direction it would be. So if there's going to be a difference in score, perhaps the difference would be on the upper end or the difference could be on the lower end. Does it change your score? Does it make your score better or does it make your score worse? Notice that I have in quotes here, the same. A research question can have the words the same. However, it is not good form. We should be talking about trying to find differences. So if you were trying to say, I want to know if men and women have the same income, ideally it should be written as do men and women have different incomes. But I put it in quotes because if you had worded your research question with the words the same, then that would imply it's a two-tailed test. Because if they're not the same, then it could be either way, upper or lower. So these are the keywords you're going to find in the research question that dictate that a two-tailed test is warranted. Therefore, our rejection region would be using the 1.96 and negative 1.96 z-scores to define our rejection region. Now let's talk about this. This is a one-tailed test, and it's actually an upper-tailed test. So we have our 95% fail to reject region, and then we have our rejection region, which is 5%. So that's associated with a z-score of 1.65. So if we looked in our z-table, 1.65 would be associated with a 5% um, tail. So this is a one-tailed upper-tailed test because you can see it's in the upper side and it's just one tail. There's only one red zone. Again, we've maintained our alpha at 5%. Our rejection region is capped at 5%. Um, but it's all on one side instead of split evenly 2.5% on either side. So how would we know if we're going to do a one-tailed test? Well, first, first of all, you're going to need good justification, previous literature, um, some really valid reasons to do a one-tailed test. But the research question would also indicate to you that a one-tailed test is warranted. So you're going to see words for this like these. So does it increase your score? Does it improve your mood? Do you feel um, more content? Does it make you have a higher performance? So these are all things that suggest that it's all going to be in the upper end of the tail. I also put er in there because that's really any of the er words. Does it make you happy er, fuzzy er, funny er, right? Any more of those things. So these words all suggest you're going to be in the upper end of the tail because you're going to have more of it. Now let's contrast that with this one tail test. So this is also one tailed because you can see that it's just got the one red zone. We have our 95% fail to reject region on this side and the 5% rejection region on the left now. So that's associated with a z-score of negative one point, sorry, negative 1.65. So our rejection region would be defined as any score uh, negative 1.65 or less. And so this is a one-tailed test, but it's a lower-tailed test. Again, we've maintained our alpha at 5%, but now we're looking at questions that direct us to look on the lower tail only. So the research question, or sorry, yeah, the research question keywords would be things like, does it decrease your mood? Does it lower your performance? Does it reduce your score? Does it make um, the speed go down? Uh, does it make you less happy? Right. So these are all words that suggest you're going to be on the lower end of the scale, and so that would justify a one-tail test that's on the lower end. 
So no matter what, your research question will be dictating whether it's two-tailed or whether it's one-tailed. And then if it's one-tailed, it'll be upper-tailed or lower-tailed. So these, re these key words in the research question will tell you whether it's two-tailed, upper-tailed, or lower-tailed.